Advances in cardiac surgery near the mid-20th century created a need for an artificial means of stimulating the heart muscle. Initially developed as large external devices, technological advances resulted in miniaturization of electronic circuitry and the eventual development of completely implantable devices. Artificial pacemakers now exist as routine, safe, and sophisticated treatment used around the world. They are considered one of the great medical inventions of the 20th century. In general, implanted pacemakers can sense, inhibit, and trigger the intrinsic cardiac activity. In other words, they can detect the electrical activity of the heart and stimulate it to contract at a faster rate. They can even control the heart rate and AV nodal delay to modulate rate responsiveness. Nevertheless, pacemakers are far from benign and carry their own risk and potential adverse effects. With the widespread use of pacemakers and increasing trend towards use of cardiac devices, it is important to be familiar with what they do and how they work. In upcoming lectures, we will look at the components of pacemakers and get you up to speed with knowing how to recognize various devices, potential problems, and their signals on the EKG. For now, we will review some of the basics of cardiac pacing and indications for their use. If you recall, normal cardiac activity begins in the sinus node, where cells with intrinsic automaticity act as pacemaker cells. Electrical wave fronts then spread across the atria to the AV node, which they pass through to the, and enter the his Purkinje system to rapidly spread to and depolarize the ventricles. When intrinsic cardiac automaticity or conduction integrity fails, the electrical excitability of cardiac tissue allows a small external electrical stimulus to drive myocytes to the threshold, thereby depolarizing neighboring myocytes and propagating the electrical wave front with near simultaneous muscular contraction. Pacemakers essentially provide the, this external stimulus that we're talking about. So if you look here, we have our conduction system. Notice here's your sinus node, okay, your sinal atrial node, and then you have your internodal pathways, these here, okay, that come to our AV node, and then we have our His system, okay, the His Purkinje system, and that's when you have your bundle branches uh, on both the right and left side, the fascicles on the left side, and then the Purkinje fibers, so the His Purkinje system. So what happens is normally we'll have the sinus node fire and conduct down through the conduction system. However, if this fails, you may have an external pacemaker cell that takes over. In the absence of that, okay, what we can do is put these pacemakers into them and pretty much uh, provide an external stimulus that allows for depolarization and activation of the cardiac muscle tissue. And that's essentially what we're doing here. So failure of the sinus node to generate impulses, so the sinus node here, or failure of the electrical conduction to system to transmit impulses may lead to bradycardia or even asystole, so slow heartbeats or even a flat line. In such cases, latent pacemakers or secondary pacemakers typically take over pacemaking function to prevent asystole by establishing an escape rhythm. While these escape rhythms can be life-saving, they also have two fundamental shortcomings that we should know about. First, escape rhythms established by latent pacemaker or secondary pacemaker have a lower frequency than that of the sinus node, and as a result, lower the cardiac output and may result in symptoms such as shortness of breath, dyspnea, uh, maybe some chest discomfort, or even maybe presyncopal or syncopal events. The other issue with escape rhythms is that they are unreliable in the long term, meaning they don't tend to have the ability to last forever, okay? Their activity may cease or stop and result in asystole. So therefore, as you may expect, pacemakers are indicated if impulse formation or impulse conduction is defective, such that bradycardia develops and maybe the patient becomes symptomatic. A common cause of defective impulse formation is sinus node dysfunction, and a common cause of defective impulse conduction is an AV block. Okay, The high-grade AV blocks, maybe your second or third, are the ones that we want to be careful with. Now, modern pacemakers are very sophisticated and can take over the roles of import, impulse formation and impulse conduction. So the, thing, the two problems that we said that can occur from the escape rhythms, this is where the pacemakers can come and play a role. 
We will learn that they can adapt their function to the heart's own activity by sensing, as well as the needs of the body through rate responsiveness. They can also detect and treat tachyarrhythmias, whether uh, originating as supraventricular tachyarrhythmia, so above the ventricles or within the ventricles. There's a lot to learn in this chapter, but it will certainly be worth it. All right, let's review what we discussed before we end here. So we said that we have artificial pacemakers, okay, and that means that they're artificially stimulating the heart muscle. They can sense, they can inhibit or trigger intrinsic cardiac activity. They're able to adapt function to the heart's activity by sensing. So they can adapt the function to the heart's activity as well as to the patient's activity through something called rate responsiveness that we'll look at in a later lecture. They're also capable of detecting and treating these tachyarrhythmias. So fast rhythms that we want to be cautious about because they can uh, sometimes be life-threatening. Now, pacemakers are not benign, okay? They carry risks and potential adverse effects. We always want to make sure and uh, infection is a big risk, uh, for instance. So that's one thing to keep in mind, among others. Now, the conduction system, if it fails, what we can have are these escape rhythms that result by these latent or secondary pacemakers, although this is not ideal. We said that as a result, if you have these escape rhythms, they have a lower frequency, as a result, lower the cardiac output, and patients may develop symptoms. They're not reliable for long-term use, okay? Their activity of these escape rhythms will not last, you know, indefinitely, and as a result, the patient may develop asystole. So a pacemaker indication, there's a few that you should be aware of. The failure to generate or the failure to transmit impulses, okay? If it's a defective impulse formation, one of the common ones is sinus node dysfunction, okay? So forming, meaning the sinus node is not working here. You cannot transmit or even initiate, generate an impulse. And the second is impulse conduction, okay? So maybe you have a conduction problem here at the AV node. Okay, so you can see sinus node is not generating it or the AV node is not allowing conduction down through the ventricles. So as high degree AV blocks can cause that. Well, that's the end of this lecture. We discussed an overview of pacemakers, including some of the basics of, of cardiac pacing, as well as the indications for their use. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay, so completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay, these are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, i really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic and it's used now among many institutions so use uh, check that out now what it also includes are calipers so yes you get calipers with this course okay um i don't know anyone else that offers that but you do get calipers i think they're very helpful and they can uh you know if you know how to use them correctly uh can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on okay and then you also get our pocket 
EKG reference. Okay, this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there. Very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic, in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course. You'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay. And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself um, 25% off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.